We all got this problem. We are adding new devices, we are testing things, we are changing things, but nobody cares about what happens if you delete some devices or change something and it is used for some automation, but the entity has changed, so it's not possible anymore to use it. But you didn't even realize. That is why you need this monitoring tool. Let's start. So today we're going to take a look on the Watchman, or only Watchman. Watch out, watch out. Watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out. The world around us is constantly changing and so is Home Assistant. That's very, very true because everybody of us has changed something in this environment. No matter if it's just the entity ID or added some device or just had to re-add them because they didn't work anymore or something like this and the name changed so they became, like it says here, permanently unavailable and you didn't even realize but you used them for an automation or something and the automation doesn't work anymore but sometimes you didn't even realize because, because it's just a small automation, you don't use it so often and as it says here you want to be able to re react proactively so before some critical automation maybe also gets broken. That's very, very true. And that's the main reason for this little integration. We can download and use this integration by using the Home Assistant Community Store as always because it opens us the world. It's a community project and it's very nice to use. And we can see here we have the possibility to use a notification service like, for example, Telegram, but you need to configure it yourself. It's not included, but that's not a problem at all. There are several tutorials on YouTube and I can also make a tutorial if you want to. That Just let me know in the comments below and we can give some data, but that's not important. We have also the possibility to say which folders we want to include or also exclude and can say which ones we also want to ignore maybe, which entities or services, because you might know some are always going down and you know it and you don't care about it or something like this. I will give you an example of myself here later and also maybe just you want to exclude some entity states, like you say, I'm not caring if it is unavailable or unknown because unknown is not bad for me for some entity. So it's very easy. That's the whole thing for now. I will put the link in the description and also for my blog entry where you can copy all the code so you don't need to write it yourself. You can also see it here that we can use this Telegram, yeah, this Telegram notification service. But you don't need this part here. I will show you an easier part because this never worked. I tried it several times, but it doesn't work and it's possible to do it way easier. I don't know why this example is here, it never worked for me, maybe you have better luck, but you don't even need it, so don't waste your time on it. And you can also see it would look like this, we have this um, sensor here, maybe this Ch Xiaomi Mio sensor, and you can see in it is located, you use it in the automations YAML in line 231 and 1348, and that's the exact position. So you can go into your home assistant folder, like I could do here, go into automations, just open it and go into the exact line to see what it's according to. And then you can still go to home assistant and say, hmm, here are my automations, which one was it and open it there and change it there. You can get this watchman report like for in telegram or per notification or also in a file. And you can also have, that we will also show you, do, should I say again also? I guess also I should also say, sorry. And that's how the, the markdown card would look like. You can see, hey, we have missing entities here or missing services. Not everybody is doing it the same. I have done it maybe a bit else, a bit different, but yeah, it works fine. So we are here in the Home Assistant Community Store now for my installation and we can just search for Watchman. Then we can see here how it is to install it. It's, as always, you just have the button here. Normally, if you if I have wouldn't have installed it already, you have the install button here. You can click here on the upper right, uh, not on the upper right, on the under, is it under right? On this little point here, you have the possibility to just press it, then press install and also reload your home assistant installation because or your instance because otherwise it won't be reload. Then we have to go in our integrations. So we have our integrations here. You come there from settings, then integrations and can just click add integration. 
then we have to again search for Watchmen. Just click on Watchmen. And for me, it says, of course, only one instance is allowed. But for you, it would say, hmm, here are the settings. Just do it. Like I can show you here. That would be this one. You could see configure and you should see notification service. We have here notify.telegram, which I am using. As I said, you need to, to configure this one yourself. It has nothing to do with this integration, but it's not the problem. You can also add it later, like I could change it right now here. And we can use it and say, hmm, we want to include the folder config, which is the, doc the mounted Docker path of my Home Assistant uh, installation. So we can see it here. We also can see where we want to set the report location, where should this txt file should be saved, and also some custom header if you want to. So if you can see, we have the Watchman report here. This is my config folder. I have mapped it to Smart Home, Home Assistant, whatever. These are all files that are considered in, yeah, in the check of Watchman. And that's very, very nice. So we can see this is my Watchman report here. And we can see I have one missing service right now that is Notify, Fire TV, blah, 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 in scripts YAML line 318. And that's very nice. So I could open this and I could see, ah, okay, it's this, this line with this service ID and I can easily find it. And I can also say this one here is not really a problem because um, you might know the notifications for Fire TV. It's also a thing in integration you can install and use where you can send notifications on your Fire TV, on any Fire TV and just blend in a pop-up, which is very nice. But somehow after restarting, it's a known issue, after restarting um, Home Assistant, it's always considered as missing without any reason. But it is what it is. It could also and should land here in the ignored entities and services because then it wouldn't be shown anymore. I did it, for example, for my sensor that is called uh, sensor.meter uh, with this asterisk, asterisk. I guess it's asterisk. I hope it's right. I've added this one because I got this meter, meat thermometer, because th I'm using it only when I'm cooking, but I'm not cooking all the time. And if, it, if I'm not cooking, it is unknown or unavailable, but it's not an error or a problem that you need to report to me because I know if I'm not cooking, of course, it's unavailable. So it makes sense to exclude these ones. I also have some for gasoline stations here and sometimes they close and get un become unavailable. So of course I add them here. It makes just sense. And also maybe some scenes that are created just once by, um, by an automation, they, shouldn't also, they should also not be considered here. So I add them here. You have also the possibility, as we have seen, to ignore the entity states. So say, hmm, I don't want to be informed about the missing state. And then I wouldn't have this one here in my report. It's very nice. And you can also say we want to ignore files because I have this drains dashboard. I tried it sometime, but I would, going for, I would go with my own dashboard uh, and I'm not interested in drains dashboard yet. Maybe I will come back to it once and I have some, yeah, entities in there that I'm not using anymore and had several errors here and also for custom components or blueprint. So I just said, ignore them. That aren't problems for me, just ignore them. And you can also say add friendly names to the export because then you have this service IDs and things you can see, ah, okay, that are my, um, my used entities and it's very easy to see them. That's basically the configuration. You can say submit and we can also see, okay, that's our service here. We can have this one that's called Watchman last updated. So it was checked 40 minutes ago last time. Then we can see we have zero missing entities and one missing item for the missing services. And that's it. That are our sensors. And to always have a look on our sensors, we can even have this markdown card here. So we have the overview always. Maybe you put it somewhere on your um, dashboard on my Check it manually if you want and see, ah, oh, okay, I have missing entities or missing services. And we can also look at the code. Like I said, it will be on my uh, website anyway. Oh, I have to press edit. So I will copy it and we can see it looks sign kind of crazy, but it's not uh, that hard to understand. So I just check for missing ones or unavailable man uh, ones and just split them for entities and services to not put them together. And yeah, there you can see them. But doing it manually sucks. I'm honest, it sucks. 
because we can have also an automation to inform us or a notification. It's very nice. So, as we can see here, I have created an automation that reports me just on the first of the month and sends me the watchman report and basically just an overview of the devices that are missing. We can just say when the time is equal 12 a.m., just at midnight, then another one is that we need to have the value template for this, that now is the function day is the first because it's the first of the month. When these both are valid for this day, then we go and call a service that is available from Watchman that is called report. So you can just use it if you have Watchman installed. And now we can make some um, settings to it to say maybe we do we want to create a file report. I would recommend it. It's also true by default because it makes sense even if the notification is failing, the report is normally created. That's very nice. Then we have this send notification here. By the way, just to tell you, that here is not important. This one, this slider is important to set it to true or false. I don't know if this also needs to be checked, but yeah, I know this one is, of, is very important. Otherwise it wouldn't work. And we can also set a different notification service. We have set in the general configuration, as we have seen before, to notify punk telegram, but we can also override it and say we want to use notify punk discord, notify punk, I don't know what. Then we have the pass configuration here. For example, we can say we also want to, when we call watchman punk report, we want to do it again, but normally it's not needed. So it's false by default. That's what I meant, because here it's checked, but here it's not checked the slider and it will be false. And the chunk size, you don't need to change it normally. Then you would have really problems if the message is so long that you have so many missing entities, then you have slightly different problems. So here you can see in the YAML, you can see pass config is false. Like I said, the slider is off, then it's off. And it's very easy. That's the config and this works for the Telegram notification. I can show you the Telegram notification also here. I um, will show you. You can just watch your entities for unavailable things, for missing things, for anything that's not working anymore. And that automated. Don't even manually. So have fun with this automation and with this tool, Watchmen. Big credits to the one that created it. It's really nice. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Bye bye.